In the summer after my first year of university, I got my very first white collar job. I got a job working for a bank and I was full of myself. I was so excited. I was wearing a tie to work. I was working in downtown Kamloops. It was a very exciting time in my life uh, working at the bank. And uh, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just know I knew I had landed a job at the bank and they hadn't told me what. I assumed I would be a teller, but I quickly learned that nerdy uh, looking people uh, that have quirks like I have should not be customer facing. And they quickly stuck me down in the basement of the bank in a room I didn't know existed. It was a room called the cash room. And what the cash room did was it took any cash deposit, any cash coming into the bank and reconciled it against the customer's deposit slip, made sure that the correct amount of cash was there, and then just totaled up all the cash coming into the bank in a given day. And this was in the 90s, and there was a lot more cash just generally flowing in our economy. Now it's more cards and things like that, but like physical dollar bills were moving around a lot more back then. So there was it was a busy job. There was, I think, five or six of us working in this room, and our only job was to like count money for the bank. Yes, we had machines to help us, uh, but even still, you you did need people to do that work. So, uh, you know, at first when I got in there, I was like, oh my goodness, this mysterious cash room. But uh, the longer you worked at the bank, you realized, oh no, it's just another room between a bathroom and a lunchroom. It's not some secret uh, society, the cash room. And so, you know, as I worked uh, the first few days, it was interesting dealing with all this money. I I was interested in money, but I got to be honest, like most jobs, and this was a pretty repetitive job, It got tedious. And the fact that I was handling so much money, tens of thousands of dollars a day, the 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 fun of it, the novelty of it wore off quickly. It became kind of a boring job after a while. But there was one part of my job that always got my heart racing, that always got me excited. It was my job to carry the money at the end of the day from the cash room back up to the main part of the bank because that's where the bank vault was and that's where the cash would be stored. So you might be thinking to yourself, and you'd be right, that they gave me the money because I am just such a wonderful person. I'm like an angel and I'm the most trustworthy person in the cash room. And that's what I thought. But the reality was the only reason I got the job of carrying the cash back up to the bank from the cash room was because it was really heavy, $30,000 to $50,000 a day in cash. And uh, I was the new guy and they just gave the new guy the grunt work. So that's what they did. Uh, But that gave me the opportunity to have elaborate fantasies. All I did was every day think about stealing that money. I just, every single moment of the day, I thought, okay, if I, if here's how I would do it and I would get away with it this way or I get away with that way or this is what I'd try to do. And I, you know, imagine myself on some beautiful beach with palm trees in the ocean and I have ripped abs and I look terrific. I mean, it, it was quite a fantasy. I was very involved, uh, but it never happened. And the reason this never happened is bringing us to the point of module four is because the bank had epic controls. It had terrific controls. And controls are just systems that companies put in place to make sure that their assets are being properly utilized. So for a bank, of course, a bank's going to be worried about money. They don't want to lose the money. They don't want customers stealing the money. They don't want employees stealing the money. They are worried about money. But other companies have other assets to be worried about. Whenever TRU uh, gives me a prof a laptop, they put a big sticker on it that says, this is property of TRU. That's them controlling their asset. Uh, if you have worked in a restaurant, particularly one that like has high-end food like steak or caviar or something, they would have controls to make sure employees aren't stealing the steaks or the caviar. So companies put controls in place just to make sure their assets are being properly utilized and, and used to their best efficiency, right? Um, and so at the bank, the controls were intense. And, and you can imagine, what were the controls that prevented me from stealing this, even if I wasn't an angel? Well, first, of course, they knew my name. They had my employee record. And 
everything in a bank is recorded. It was all on camera. So even if I made a run for it, they would have all my information. They know my family. They know where I live. Uh, you know, I'd be on the news. Then 10 minutes later, my face would be everywhere. It'd be very hard for me to get very far because it'd be very public. But even that wasn't enough. That wasn't the only control they put on me. Uh, they only let us leave through one door at the end of the day. And that door was locked. And guess what? I did not have the key for the lock. The key for the lock was in the custody of a security guard named Julie. And Julie was tougher than me. So when I was having my elaborate fantasies about getting away with the money, I always had to contemplate how I would get past Julie. You know, I'd knock her over and get the key somehow. And it just wasn't going to happen. Julie was going to get the better of me in this exchange. And so even in my fantasies, I wasn't going to get away with it. And it certainly wasn't going to be something I would do anyway. So what this kind of taught me was a, an odd lesson. And I, I do actually consider myself a pretty moral person. I don't cheat. I really try to be honest in life. Uh, but money made me go a little crazy. It gave me these elaborate fantasies about like, I'm going to get away with this money and how would I do it? And there's a reason companies have to keep tight controls of their money. There's a reason when you go to Walmart and the cash register opens the wrong time, and they have to call a manager over to, to properly open the cash register or to make sure th those are all controls just to make sure that cash isn't being mishandled by the clerk. Because I imagine cash does get mishandled by the clerk, both by mistake and on purpose. Um, so the big control here that we're going to focus on is one that actually focuses on the accounting side of things. So with cash, of course, the company keeps, most companies keep most of their money in a bank account. And the bank is keeping track of your cash. At the same time, your accountant is keeping track of your cash. And so it makes sense that the bank's tracking of cash and the accountant's tracking of cash, there should be some overlap there. And that overlap is called a bank reconciliation. It's to reconcile what the bank thinks versus what the accountant thinks. And that's a great way to control cash. It's a great way to say, oh, did we miss anything? Did we make any honest mistakes? It's also a way to catch dishonest mistakes. So every company I've ever seen and every company worth its salt does a bank reconciliation every month. And that's going to be a big focus of this week. We're going to learn how to prepare and understand bank reconciliations. Let's get after it.